So we're gonna talk about the motherfucking war on Christmas. Are you ready? Welcome to all the VGGers. Come hang out in our chat. You can use all the cool emojis that you like and some new ones that are just, just fresh for the Demon Mama experience. Come on and hang out. We would love it. And we're gonna talk about the motherfucking war on Christmas. What the fuck is the war on Christmas? You might not know. The war on Christmas has begun. That's right, everyone. If you're here in this chat, I am drafting you into the army of the anti-Christmasers. We are going to destroy Christmas and replace it with Xmas. Do you understand? Do you understand that right now we are declaring war on Christmas? And all of you are going to help me. Just kidding. What we're going to learn about is why conservatives have convinced themselves for years, for decades, arguably, that there is an there is a ongoing war on Christmas. And here's the thing. I want to talk about it because this happens every single year and I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you that, they're, that they do this every single year and they've done it for as long as you can imagine. Some of you in this chat are Zoomers. Some of you may not know that long ago, they were still doing the same old boring bullshit that they were always doing. Can we call it happy holidays and said, yes. Hey, Strawberry Hedgehog, happy to have you. You're co you've come in just in time. I'm very happy to have you all from VGG. Again, you've probably seen me there. I've been there for a long time, hanging around. Named Demon Mama there too. So let's talk about Christmas. This was the one that prompted me because, you know, me being someone who's declared war on Christmas, um, being someone who's declared war on Christmas, I don't think about Christmas very much because thankfully it will be erased. But some people are, and some of those people you might recognize. Let me show you. Do these people look familiar to you? Maybe not this guy because you can't see his face. But this over here is Dave Rubin. You know? You know Dave Rubin? This is Glenn Beck. They've been real worked up about Christmas. And this was a couple of days ago. So let's get into it. Let's hear. What's this Christmas shit all about? Why is everyone wanting, trying to kill Christmas? Why is there a war on Christmas? Well, let's find out. Dave, you're Jewish. Wait, is Dave Rubin Jewish? Wait, I didn't think Dave... Wait a minute. I thought Ben Shapiro was Jewish. I thought Dave Rubin was not Jewish. Is he Jewish? Wait, is Dave Rubin actually Jewish? I didn't think he was. Wait a minute. He was an atheist. He's not Jewish. He's an atheist. Does he just roll with it? I've not seen this clip. I'm watching this live. I've only heard of this clip. Well, all right. Dave, you're Jewish. Um, yeah. the, I feel as I was listening He's to He's a born you, again Jew? Wait, really? Is he one of those ones? I mean, yeah, it is. Of course it is. But, oh, he was raised in a secular Jewish household. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. For the first time, I... F and, and Glenn Beck is a Mormon. Feel kind of like... I bet a lot of Jews felt in Germany where you're like, but that's so crazy. They'd yep. never do that. Uh, and you look back now and go, all of the signs were there. They were telling you what they were going to do. How did you miss it? I, am I crazy for thinking that? You know, it's one of those things where you start thinking it and you go, oh, could we really be there? And that's part of why it's so hard to think about it in a clear way. Could we really be there? And I actually think the answer is yes. If these people were to get the institutional power, they will do all of the things that they <laughs> purport Trump to believe in and to do that he never does. Dave, you're Jewish. Um, yeah. That's all they talk about in this clip? This clip was boring. I thought they had more of this. It's all right. 
let's just let's the takeaway from this clip is that Glenn Beck thinks that Christians and Christmas is at the same position as Jewish people were in the rise of Hitler's Germany. Which is just a little strange, but it's not the big, you know, it's not the, this isn't the first time. They've been doing this for quite a while. The is war on Christmas for some holiday has been being waged for a while. So I grabbed this video from Fox News from two years ago. So let's just take a look into it. I just want to show you what they've been talking about. It is about. the season for some holiday hysteria, and it begins in the state of Illinois, where a satanic temple has added a statue in tribute to the Prince of Darkness among the twinkling holiday decorations in the state capitol, citing freedom of religion. And if that's not enough, liberals are still taking aim at Melania Trump's festive and patriotic decorations, accusing her of powwowing with Russia over her use of red Christmas trees. Recently, I spoke with... The smuckling is incredibly annoying. ...with president of <laughs> Liberty University, hey, Jerry thanks for Falwell, the follow, Big Jr., on this and other issues with the war, on Christmas. All right, Jerry, listen, this is like the Trump derangement. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love when we get to hear the complete charisma black hole of Jerry Falwell Jr. Let's hear what he has to say. Syndrome meets the war on Christmas. These decorations look fine to me. The left is calling them evil. Let me predict. Ready? I'm going to predict. I haven't seen this clip yet. Let me predict. Well, you see that the thing is that, well, it's Christmas and they just really want to get Christianity out of the place. And Jesus Christ is the, the reason that America keeps on going. We're built on Christian principles, but they just keep on to taking Christ out of Christmas. Let's find out. Bloody, spooky. They called the hallway a murder forest. Do you understand the outrage? Um, the first lady was here at Liberty University and she was asked a question about the... The first lady with hair. Criticism of her decorations, and she said, "It's the 21st century. Everybody has different tastes." I, she said, "I think they look beautiful." And the whole 10,000 seat arena it was packed. Everybody started cheering for. Her. They agree with her, and it's uh, you know it's just so it's such a double standard. If she were married to a Democratic president. She would be on the cover of every fashion magazine True. just about every month because she's, I think, the most beautiful and classiest first lady we've ever oh, had. Oh, true. Devious. Yeah, she's definitely and, the most stylish. And, you know, I have a lot in common. Yeah, he talks like he talks like his mouth is full of marbles at all times. Always. This guy has he has no speaking ability. It's unbelievable. He was past a, a, a televangelism empire from his dad who could actually speak. And, and it's just like, like. It's like when it's like when the king's son is like completely incapable of being in charge of anything. That's this guy. He inherited a ten televangelism industry and he can't speak. He can't preach. He can just mumble. He is a charisma black hole. I told you. I'm in with Melania. I mean, we are both incredibly stylish. Oh, I don't know, people. Lucretia Lane. And sometimes That's a we tough take question. fashion risks or design risks, and it's a burden that we bear. Because people just haven't really caught up to us, and eventually they will, and they don't understand. You know, red is the new black this year for Christmas. But, but I have a feeling though that if you decorated the White House, it wouldn't be as pretty as if, as, as the way she's done. <laughs> you know what? I think. You um, I feel like if you decorated, it wouldn't be as good. Get it? Because you're a boy and she's a girl. <laughs> You'd probably be right. I'd probably just put a yeah. bunch of punch bowls up there and fill them <laughs> to the brim. Um, all right, let's get yeah. into this Massachusetts town. I guess the town's Dorchester, a beautiful town mm. up in Massachusetts. They sent out an invitation to a Christmas party. You can hear him breathing really heavily and grunting into his mic. Just listen. Listen closely. Ready? Let me see if I can get it loud enough. Just listen nice and close here. Town up in Massachusetts. They sent out an invitation to a Christmas party. And you ready? This is the theme. I'm dreaming of a white Dorchester. Now, you know, I'm mm -hmm. dreaming of a white Christmas. Classic right there. Everybody understands right. that. But they got heat from all these left wingers at the town that says that's racist. We're dreaming of a white Dorchester well, or any, white any, Christmas is racist. Anybody with any common sense knows it's a take off the song White Christmas. <laughs> it's 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 art. And just like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, it's art. And the left always uses art as an excuse to put 
to uh, put on display some of the most vile and um, and just just absolutely disgusting type of displays in different museums, but it's okay. They put the most disgusting and vile things. Like what the fuck? Like it, he can't even he can't even work up the he can't even work up the fucking energy to to come up with something bad that the leftists have done. Okay, because it's art. Well, why isn't Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and White Christmas the song? Why isn't that just art? I mean, just it's it, to me, it's it's hypocritical. Another double standard from the left, and um, I think people are getting tired of it. I think people see through it. Just when you thought, just when we thought that they'd run out of people, classes of people to to name as victims, <laughs> they come up with Rudolph the Red-Nosed yeah, Reindeer I mean, listen, as the newest victim class. Yeah, li listen to this. <laughs> what? What? That doesn't even make any fucking sense. He. So, oh, Rudolph attacked the Huffington Okay, Post. this is actually worse than I thought it was going to be. When I started watching this, I thought it was going to be way more War on Christmas than it has been weird, like, SJW, like, botched SJW jokes. Post singles this out. They say Rudolph is, uh... It, 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 it exhibits racism and homophobia, and they called Santa Claus abusive and bigoted, and they said it, like, promotes bullying or something. These are adult men, by the way. Have a good night, Ace. Have a good night. Thanks for coming by. Oh, yeah, he's in charge of Liberty University, or he was. He's not anymore. Um, after he got caught drinking on camera, he, he got kicked out. Despite the fact that he's been on camera um, buying drugs... Uh, hiring strippers, all kinds of stuff like that. Like that. You know, from my recollection of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and I haven't seen it in a while, but the point mm -hmm. was the people that were bullying Rudolph were bad, and he overcame the bullying to be the right, hero. Right. Wasn't that the exactly. point? It's the underdog, underdog making it to the top. That's that's the way I took it, and it's yeah. just. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I agree with you. I think the was he fired Christmas for the cuckery? It might have been the cuckery. I thought people were mad because he was clearly holding an alcoholic beverage, and he's talked about how he's not out. He doesn't drink alcohol, and people were like, "What the fuck?" This is over. I think the people on that side lost. And they're just a bunch mm -hmm. of dead enders running around. Now, this is this is kind of a controversial story, and I understand the the controversy. There's a town in New Jersey, and there's this one house that puts up all these lights, like thirty thousand lights, very festive, very in the okay. spirit of Christmas. And neighbors and the mayor are complaining, and they say there's too many Christmas lights. It's a distraction. It's causing all this foot traffic in the town, and they want this house to pay all this security money because it's too crazy. Do you, do you understand the outrage or do people have a point? Ah, uh, here we go. I don't think people should worry about what other people do on their property. I, I don't like zoning laws. I don't like, uh, we, we built, spent over a billion dollars here on campus the last 10 years and we had to fight the city on so many different zoning matters where they tried to control us and tell us how we could do this and how big this sign had to be and how small this one had to be. And yeah. I just think they're good. I think it's un-American. I think we've gotten to a place where it's we un have people. Who you heard it here, folks. Uh, zoning laws are un-American because the Christmas lights are distracting, and that's the war on Christmas. Damn. Who don't own any interest in property? So no, I didn't. Otano no Aji. If you have a link to that, we can watch. We can check it up. Tell us what we can do with our property, and we're, and we're the ones that have paid for it. It's so I, true. I'm, I'm surprised yeah. they're not even complaining that the Christmas lights promote global warming. I mean, that's that's where <laughs> I would have assumed they would have complained. All right, that Jerry. House remind, it reminded me of uh, uh, Clark Griswold's house in the, in the movie Christmas <laughs> Vacation. Exactly. I wonder, if, I wonder if he got grief for that one. Uh, exactly. Hopefully no <laughs> one got electrocuted like Clark. All right, yep. Jerry, thanks yep. very much. I appreciate it. And Great. Merry Christmas. Great to be with you, Jesse. Merry Christmas to you. Oh, damn. They owned the libs there at the end. They got him. Got him with the Merry Christmas. And we got this. I wanted to watch this, too. We had a couple of videos about this. We've watched some of the things about the the war on Christmas. Let's read. Let's watch this little slate thing. Keep in mind, this one's from seven years ago. So this has been going on a while. Dear 
dearest wife. It is with heaviest heart I write you on. Oh, this is not God. the one I wanted. God damn it. Let me just show you this. That wasn't the video that I wanted. God damn it. Where's the fucking video? Hold on. I got it here for you. Give me a second. Here we go. Now, some of you, some of you may have seen this one before. Quite a few months ago. But we're going to watch it again. Because this is the type of stuff. Now, this movie came out in 2014. This is the type of film that the uh, fucking war on Christmas people make every single year trying to convince you that there's a war on Christmas. Oh, yes, Gatefesh. We're watching it. Yes, that's true. In 2015 or 2014, I can't remember which year it was, there was a huge fucking debacle about Starbucks taking Merry Christmas off of their mugs and switching it to Happy Holidays because in their mind, that was an attack on Christians in America. That was persecution. That was used as, as an argument by places like Fox News that Christians were persecuted in, this, in the United States. Now, keep in mind... Um, Keep in mind that, um, all, like in churches all across America, starting today on November 1st, right after Halloween, you're going to hear the grift switch from talking about how Halloween is the day of Satan, how there's marijuana that's being handed out in your candy, and all of this other absolutely unhinged bullshit. That's what you're going to, it's going to switch from that into talking about fucking Christmas and talking about how Christians have been persecuted in, in America for the last a hundred years. And, you know, they want to take Christ out of Christmas. Sa Santa is a secularization of Christmas and we should have more nativity scenes and every fucking extreme Christian church in America, any like anything short of like your your local fucking Lutheran church, anything further than that is going to be fucking losing their minds over Christmas for the next two months. I promise you. I promise you. I grew up in one of the most extreme churches in this country and they would do it every single year like clockwork. From the moment that November began until the end of the year, it was talking about how Christians are the most persecuted people on the planet. And it results in movies like this. Let's just watch for some hot, hot cringe. Do you ever feel like Christmas has been hijacked? Hey, uh, where's Christian? How's he doing? Is he okay? Oh, he's fine, really. He's just, he's just not into Christmas this year, that's all. By all the commercialism and those who want to replace Merry Christmas with Happy Holidays or Season's Greetings, whatever that means. You By people who want to re replace Merry Christmas with Season's Greetings, whatever that means. They literally turn in a slight change of people saying, hey, like people actually celebrate other holidays at this time of the year. Maybe we should be respectful to them. And they go, that's persecuting us. They're, we're being persecuted. Okay. This is not what Christmas is all about. Some want to pull down every manger scene and tell us why our favorite Christmas traditions are wrong. Newsflash, not in the Bible. That's a pagan idol symbol. It was the winter solstice. Jesus was not born in December. It's exactly what the Druids did. It's like a carjacking, but like of our religion. And guess what? Santa got in the car, kicked Jesus out, and was like, rolling, 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 and took, and just took it. Isn't it time somebody spoke up? Everything you see inside there, it's all about Christmas. It's all about Jesus. <laughs> you love Christmas and you want it to be all about what it's all about. Yeah, this movie is like the unholy alignment of capitalism and Christianity. And it's funny because Kirk Cameron has gotten mad about, oh, they're putting Xmas and Santa all over everything in the past. And this is them trying to recuperate that message further so that they can align with him not fucking feeling bad about having fucking Donald Trump in the White House, an open, obvious capitalist who doesn't give a shit about Christianity. You can, you too can embrace consumerism and still love Jesus. This Christmas, dive headfirst into all of the joy, the dancing, the celebration, the feasting, 
the imagination and traditions that glorify the true reason for the season. Who work Holy Spirit? Ha! Can I get an amen? I see yeah. The scales are falling off. Glory! Ah! Glory! Mm. Join me and my family, and together, let's put Christ back into Christmas. So, needless to say, uh, Christians Christians have a weird obsession with claiming that they're being outlawed because people are changing the way that they handle the holiday season. And it's really weird. Let me see if I can find you an article about this. Here we go. <laughs> A brief history of Starbucks holiday, cu holiday cup controversies. The coffee chain seasonal cup designs have ignited plenty of internet fury in recent years. 2015. Starbucks rolls out a new holiday cup that's decidedly more subdued than years past. A rather plain red ombre design, with the, which the company explains is intended to usher in the holidays with a purity of design that welcomes all of our stories, aka be more inclusive. This doesn't sit well with some, including an internet evangelist by the name of Joshua Fuerstein. In the video that goes viral, Fuerstein clad in a Jesus t-shirt, clutching a handgun, rails against the coffee chain for trying to take Christ and Christmas off of their cups and encourages people to prank Starbucks by telling baristas their name is Merry Christmas so they'll have to write it on their cup and call it out when the drink is ready. Fuistein Streen screed and the resulting internet fury leads Donald Trump to weigh in on the controversy, telling supporters at a rally that the Starbucks cups were evidence of the war on Christmas. Oh yeah. Oh, Bill O'Reilly used to fucking obsess about the war on Christmas. 2016. Following the 2015 debacle, Starbucks forgoes red cups altogether, instead going with a green cup featuring a mosaic of more than 100 people drawn in one continuous stroke. A symbol of unity, founder Howard Schultz explains. Somewhat predictably, this cup design leads to a swift backlash from a very vocal group of conservatives, with some claiming the cups are an attack on Christian values. Detractors take to Twitter to accuse the company of political brainwashing and spreading liberal vi bias. 2017, Starbucks brings back the red holiday cup, this time with a more holiday-esque design that features snowflakes, wrapped, wrapped presents, and a pair of holding hands. Though the gender of said hands cannot be seen on the cup, BuzzFeed should suggest this depiction is totally gay, leading conservative media outlets like Fox News and The Blaze, hey, that's funny, we were just talking about The Blaze, to accuse the chain of pushing a gay agenda. Starbucks doesn't confirm one way or the other. We intentionally designed the cup so our customers can interpret it in their own way. Oh no, Grime Dango. Why are you sick? Is your is your tummy still hurting? Mm, that makes me sad. You came in just in time for us to talk about the war on Christmas. In a clear attempt to avoid the controversies of the past, Starbucks unveils four new holiday cup designs that are decidedly, if somewhat subtly, Christmassy. A red and white stripe design reminiscent of candy canes, a white cup with a holly-esque pattern in mint and red mint green and red a red and white houndstooth motif and a star guile design featuring twinkling stars on a green background the more festive come wow come designs the more festive cup designs seem to satisfy christmas crusaders of years gone by and no twitter firestorm erupts um following their unveiling However, Starbucks won't emerge from this holiday season entirely unscathed. This year, it also rolls out a plain red reusable holiday cup, which is given out for free on November 2nd to customers who order a holiday drink. But supplies were very, very limited. <laughs> Upset fans take to Twitter to voice their displeasure. Lol. Okay, so they bought, they dodged it this year. Talk about a white Christmas. A cum design. Yeah. They're friggin' coffee cups. Oh, they get mad about all of this stuff. Let me see if I can find you some other examples of this that aren't like the main, like the fucking main fucking Fox News people. Watch this shit. Oh yeah, here's a fuckload of, of articles about this. Here we go. Here's an article that was written by Vox. 
The X in Christmas literally means Christ. Here's the history behind it. You might be wondering why the fuck this article had to be written. Well, because in 2014, people were getting, Christians were getting really mad about people who made a sign that said, Merry Xmas, because that's taking Christ out. Literally, companies were making signs that have space, you know, like, so it'll say like, Merry Christmas, and it'll say Xmas, so that you can fit it on a card or something like that. And Christians were convinced this was a conspiracy theory to erase Christ from the holiday. Yeah, yeah, I'll come out soon. I'm, I'm almost done. We're going to do this section and then I'll end stream. You've probably heard the phrase, keep Christ in Christmas, either on a church sign or a Facebook wall. You might have even heard it this month. The idea is always the same. Let's not rub out the religious roots of this holiday by saying Xmas instead of Christmas. This might seem like a strange battle to wage, but there are people who really earnestly believe this is deeply important. For instance, B Franklin Graham, the son of Billy, put it like this. Does he have a video of it? No, this is a transcript. For us as Christians, Christmas is one of the most holy of the holidays, the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And for people to take Christ out of Christmas, well, they're happy to say Merry Xmas. Let's just take Jesus out. And I really think a war, it's a war against the name of Jesus Christ. See what I'm talking about? I told you these people believe that they're being persecuted because some random companies decided to put things as an X instead of as a fucking... Christ to save space on a fucking greeting card. Of course, there's this is absurd. How did Xmas become so hated? Good question. The answer might have something to do with the culture wars, the historical tension between the left and the Christian right. Think about Franklin Graham's quote above. For him and many who share his particular religious leanings, Xmas is a symbol. A symbol is sorry, is symbolic of a bigger problem with our culture. Not only are we crossing out Christ in the world, they say, but we're tossing him out of the public square. Therefore, Xmas, as Graham said, is a war against the name of Jesus Christ. Graham and those who think similarly, like actor Kirk Cameron, who we were just talking about, and former Alaska governor Sarah Palin, believe the secularization of American culture is all so pervasive that even if they're aware of the religious roots of Christmas or of Xmas, they still believe it's symbolic of a larger trend. Thus, it has to go. And there you go. That's what they talk about every single fucking year. Let me see what I can find out coming out of this year. Let's find out what people are talking about with Chris with Christmas this year. There we go. Oh, wait, look at this. Oops. So I'm just searching right now. And in the last 24 hours, the Christian Post has already published about the war on Christmas. Um, what is this? The Livingston Post? I don't even know what that is. And there's also been a war on Christmas hashtag started. Let's see how many tweets this has got. Oh, hey, here we go. If you vote for Biden. Who's this? Oh, nothing but. Yeah, sorry. Look at this live soon. Look at this. We got Donald Trump leaning in on it already. Let's see what If you vote for Biden, it means no kids in school, no graduations, no weddings, no Thanksgiving, no Christmas, and no Fourth of July together. Other than that, you have a wonderful life. If you vote... Literally, he's leaning into the war on Christmas bullshit already. Although that one, admittedly, was rather light from old Don. Trump released a, t a sneak peek of Melania's 2020 Christmas theme. <laughs> what is this shit? Oh, yeah, that was that. That was her thing talking about the Christmas thing. People were mad at her because um, she was talking, like, people asked her about Christmas and she wanted to pivot to something else. Wait, have you seen the Sam Cedar clip where he debates a war on Christmas person on CNN? I haven't, Video Game Architect. If you have a um, if you have a link, I'll take a look at it. I have seen the Sam the uh, Sam and Michael Brooks segment where they make fun of it. We'll watch that. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, this is all the war on Christmas. I am willing to bet money that the war on Christmas is going to be weaponized against social distancing at Christmas time. 
I'm, I'd be willing to fucking bet it. Let's take a look at what the Christian Post has to, th has to say. This is the Christian Post. That's it? They just have a comic about it? Unfair religious oppression? That's it? This is what they've got? Wow, that's all they published. That that was what I that was what they published about it. It was a fucking cartoon. It seems like their energy is a little low right now. Oh, yeah, here you go. Oh, hey, here it is. We'll give this one a watch. That's great. Here's another one. The world's largest human rights violation. This was from 2011. The persecution facing Christians is the largest human rights violation issue in, the, in today's world. According to a Pew Forum study, Christians are being persecuted in 131 of the world's 193 countries. The Germany-based International Society for Human Rights, a secular organization, estimates that 80% of all ra acts of religious discrimination in the world are directed against Christians. Some 15,000 Christians are killed for their faith each year. According uh, 200 million Christians live in communities where Christians are persecuted persecuted many of the sovereign states committing these are the allies of the west there are 400,000 christians in north korea and 25 percent of them are in labor camps no fucking citations in this entire thing and this is tagged with the war on christmas by the way this is tagged with the war on christmas they tag this with the war on christmas <laughs> Well, Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays? A Christmas tree or a holiday tree? Which should it be? Depends wait, when is this from? I want to know when this one is from. So this was from, wait. When did he go on here? This is from, this is from a while ago. This was posted in 2018, but when did he actually go on? Sammy boy. The 90s? He did this back in the 90s. This is telling you how long ago it was you ask we've seen they've been doing this for so fucking long prompted by the white house it sent out cards this card matter of fact wishing a holiday season of hope and happiness no mention of christmas some thoughts now on the subject sam teeter hosts the show majority report on air america radio bob knight oh is holy shit the... this was from when he was on air america yeah this must have been the 90s air america was around in the 90s and early 2000s holy shit God damn, Sam. Sam's been waging war on Christmas before all of us. The Culture and Family Institute is affiliated with the Christian conservative organization Concerned Women for America. Gentlemen, great to have you with me. Thank Thanks you. for having us on. All right, well, let's start with the holiday card. What do you think, Sam? Well, uh, listen, you know, as far as the war on Christmas goes, I feel like we should be waging a war on Christmas. I mean, I believe that Christmas, it's, it's, it's almost proven that uh, Christmas has uh, nuclear weapons, can be a, an imminent threat to this country that 2005. Um, wow. they have operative ties with terrorists. And I believe that we should sacrifice thousands of American lives uh, in pursuit of this war on Christmas and uh, hundreds of billions of dollars of taxpayer money. Well, Sam, is it a war on Christmas, a war on Christians, a war on po over political correctness, or just a lot of people with way too much time on their hands? Well, I would say probably, if I was to be serious about it, too much time on their hands. But I'd like to get back to the operational <laughs> ties between Santa Claus and Al Qaeda. <laughs> I don't think that exists, Bob. Well, uh, we have Help intelligence me out here. <laughs> we have intelligence. You, we have do, intelligence, you have intel, like and where yeah. exactly does your intel come from? Got him. Well, we have tortured an elf, and that's uh, <laughs> it's actually how we got the same information from Al Libby. That's exactly the same way the Bush administration <laughs> got this uh, info uh, about the operational ties between. Al Qaeda and Saddam. Okay, Bob Knight. Uh, Sam is, is Sam tying is in now the lack of information regarding weapons of mass destruction and yeah. somehow moving that into Santa Claus. Uh, help me out here. What's going on? I mean, is is this a, a, a war on Christians? A war on Christmas? Is this too much political correctness? Yeah. That, well, it was very, first. I want to compliment him on his, on his dry humor, but uh, this is actually a very serious subject because a lot of people are waking up to realize that the war on Christmas is really. Uh, the culmination of a war on faith and the idea that the public square has to be cleansed of any religious expression particularly What did I Christian say? Religion. What did I fucking what did we fucking see? They always say that they say they're being cleansed out of the public eye when Christian imagery is literally plastered over the walls of all of fucking America You can't walk five feet in America without seeing a fucking cross. Are you kidding me?
religious expression. You know, at one time, Happy Holidays was a welcome addition to Merry Christmas. It's so you wouldn't say the same thing over and over again. But a lot of people now see it as a substitute. And it's very gratuitous at times. And it's out actually insulting when you're talking- Genuinely, imagine going on national news to complain about how you're persecuted because sometimes people say happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas, and that makes you feel like there's not enough attention being given to your religion. Just, can you imagine the state of mind that you'd have to be in, the amount of mental pretzeling you would have to do in order to convince yourself that you're the most persecuted minority in America when you're literally the majority religion of the country and your iconography is plastered across the halls of the state, across every highway in America. There's a church on every corner. And there's literally a fast food chain that purposefully prints fucking Christian uh, Bible verses all over their cups and wrappers. There are Holy May and Mary and Jesus monuments all over the place. That doesn't surprise me. Talking about Christmas Day or a Christmas tree, and you can't bring yourself to use the word for fear of offending someone. Uh, in the name of diversity, we're a less free country when that happens. It's not about offending them. You're the ones getting offended. It's about saying, oh, wait a minute. People also celebrate at least two other religious holidays at this time. And there's actually quite a lot of people who celebrate those things. Maybe I should consider that they're celebrating something different than Christmas. And these are the guys who are getting offended. These are the ones who are getting offended. It, it's interesting, Sam, because, I mean, this is a time where... True, uh, true, if Grandango. Anything, we want to be even more sensitive to diversity, considering everything that's happening with regard to war on terror. We're learning so much more about different religions, different ethnicities, and trying to become more of one versus uh, being segregated. Yeah, well, Kara, I mean, listen, the, uh, I would like Bob to tell me who is the person who has been offended by uh, someone saying Merry Christmas to them. I've never met that person. I don't celebrate Christmas, but if someone says Merry Christmas to me, uh, and I either think, well, it's a little bit odd, it's like me saying happy birthday to you on my birthday, but, uh, I, you know, no one cares. But I'll tell you this, as no, we care. wage the war on the war on the war on the war on Christmas on our radio show, <laughs> News Corp, Fox News, those people who have started this uh, entire uh, uh, war on Christmas meme, fake war, they're having a holiday party. President Bush saying happy holidays. Tokyo Rose, Laura Bush, saying happy holidays to her dogs in the video. I'm sure you've seen it. I mean, these are the things that we should be talking Sam, about. Sam, in the fucking, in 2005, saying fucking memes. Sam was the original memer. He invented the memes. He brought them. He's like Prometheus. He stole the memes from the god and delivered them to us. Thank you, Sam. Bless. Bless to Sam. When we are waging this war in Iraq, we should be equating it to the war on Christmas. What else would Bob Knight have an opportunity to do? How else would he get on television if he wasn't I, pretending to be attacked? You know, this would be funny, except <laughs> it is serious to a lot of people who have seen their faith cleansed yeah, from the like, public <laughs> square systematically. Well, are you suggesting, Bob, that someone can't celebrate Christmas in America? I mean, tell I'm me about, about the person who can, can escape I these get celebrations. A word in here? Go uh, ahead, Bob. Go I'm, ahead, Bob. I'm talking about things like in Ridgeway, Wisconsin, where... The school children in the public school were told they couldn't sing Silent Night, they, so they substituted O Cold Night. You know, I think when you take Jesus out of any- what? Anecdote fucking Andy over here! Some school somewhere couldn't sing Silent Night, and so they said O Cold Night. What? That doesn't even make sense! That doesn't even have to do with Christians! Or maybe he means the second verse? Where they go, silent night, holy night. Maybe he meant maybe he meant there. That's what they substituted with oh cold night. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? My entire life in school, we had to say the motherfucking Pledge of Allegiance, which makes you pledge allegiance to God. And and keep in mind, the Christian God. And these guys sit here and fucking bitch and moan about being fucking persecuted. Are you kidding me? I think it gets pretty cold, uh, so it's apt 
But it's outrageous. They had children actually singing a bastardized version of Silent Night. Well, uh, Bob, you see, this Christmas may come to shock you, Bob. Holiday trees. But, but I don't consider Jesus the Messiah. And so if you're going to ask me to praise Jesus, I'm going to be a little offended. Well, I'm now, gonna... I don't think the singing of the song, that you can find other songs to sing. So what about Silent Night? So, so what? So because you're offended, none of those other kids can celebrate the great heritage of... Christmas. Oh, it's amazing. This is like a, like a fucking tape. This is, okay, to be fair, Sam Cedar and his team probably uploaded this tape to YouTube. And it got, like, mega compressed. Yeah, it's true. It's like... Carol's the one who said they couldn't music. do that? No, I'm not the See, one you're who you're a Grinch, But sir. you're trying That's to force... You are. Why are you trying to <gasps> they force... They called Sam a Grinch! You can't call Sam a Grinch! You motherfuckers. Conversions on people. Let me ask you guys. Let me, let me, yes, you are singing sir. a Christmas carol. Absolutely. Let, let me ask. Let me ask you guys about the pressure that's been put on on stores, for example. Uh, American Family Association called for He's the boycott of Target stores the weekend after Thanksgiving, accusing the chain of banning yeah. the phrase "Merry Christmas" from its stores, a charge that Target denies. Pressure from conservative groups. Uh, hey, look at that! Conservatives has... still making up bullshit all the way back in 2005. Target doesn't ban the words "Merry Christmas." Christ, uh, fucking Christian right-wingers claim that they did it. An impact here, complaints from the Catholic League. Walmart agreed to create True. a Christmas page on its website rather than a holiday page. And then Macy's, which is, you know, perhaps uh, more closely associated with Christmas than any other retailer, sent activists a letter touting its use of Merry Christmas in ads and store windows after it was the target of a small-scale boycott last year. I mean, this is pretty amazing, all these boycotts of pressuring all these stores, these businesses, Bob. Well, these Christians, business the original cancel culture, literally are taking millions and millions of dollars in from Christians in particular and others who celebrate Christmas yeah, giving true, gifts true, uh, in the name of the Christmas season and yet they're so worried about offending people like my opponent here that they don't want to mention the word Christmas. People Bob, are sick and tired. It's the holiday time. I'm not your opponent. Uh, but well, I yeah, do agree with Bob. Yeah, you are. I do agree with Bob that I think what should happen is companies should calculate how much money they're getting from people who are celebrating Christmas and provide exactly that much amount of Merry Christmas because that is exactly how I would want any type of religious holiday to be celebrated. Would we have the same argument about Hanukkah? Toasted! Would we have the same argument about Hanukkah? Hanukkah is not the same as Christmas. It's not. Uh oh! Uh oh! He got him! He got him mad! Now he's gonna talk about how Hanukkah sucks because when you get it, when you get these people mad, they fucking their mask flies off. Uh oh! A major holiday for one thing, and, and this Whoa! is the Christmas. Look at that! Hanukkah isn't a major holiday. Fuck you, dude. Fuck you, dude. Look at this. That's how they always end up doing it. Always. They always end up doing that shit. They're like, once you get them mad, once you get them mad, the mask comes off, and they just hate other religions. That's what it boils down to in the end. They hate other religions, and they have a desperate need to be to seem persecuted so they can act like they're the biggest martyrs on the planet. Season. No. That's why billions of dollars are really being spent. It's Christmas. Well, it's well, also the winter solstice for a minute. Too. I don't know, Bob. People just might so argue that, that, that Hanukkah is just as big as Christmas. Well, no, is, I, I mean, no, I would I have to agree with Jewish, Bob. I, I would I have, have to agree with Jewish Bob on that. And none of them okay. says Hanukkah is as big no, as Christmas. No, Hanukkah is not a high holiday. Our high no, holidays are Rosh Hashanah and Yom right. Kippur, which I'm sure Bob has been has been protesting why there aren't uh, more Yom Kippur sales or uh, Rosh Hashanah sales. <laughs> well, I mean, why shouldn't they be, right, Bob? Well, if that was associated with that holiday, then maybe I would join you, but uh, it never has been. Bob, so have you ever protested issue. Martin Luther King what? Day not being celebrated? Eww. I mean, you resent when people don't say, Happy Martin Luther King Day a month out in advance? You know what, Look, let's <laughs> put this in perspective. Wait, wait, let me, be, and, and Bob, I want you to be able to respond, but what's interesting, okay. the CNA USA Today Gallup poll, uh, the question absolutely was, absolutely torn okay apart. I, I like how he slipped in the, the month out. Are you mad when people don't say Happy Martin Luther King Day a month in advance? So good. So God tier. Sam is the best at public debate. I'm dead serious. He really is. People to say Merry Christmas. 88% said yes. 11% yeah. said no. Yeah, well, 96% of Americans celebrate Christmas. Uh, so why would we care about the, so what's the offending war, the 4% that get offended by it? Uh, yeah, I don't I mean, know anybody who'd be offended well, by someone wishing someone a Merry why Christmas. Why do we care? Why are we making all the changes, Bob? I mean, we do. Yeah, we Bob, do. Bob, where's the war?
Where's Where the are war? the battle lines? I mean, you can tell the me that Silent Night I'll can't be sung in one school in Wisconsin. That's and just one example. That's not the totality. Well, so don't. Well, do what is the totality? Man. The totality is eighty. You brought it up. The totality is eighty-eight percent of the American population has no problem with it. You don't care about the people who don't celebrate Christmas. Fine. But I don't celebrate Christmas, and I don't care. So why are we wasting everybody's time? It's so I, that you can fundraise. That's why, Bob. I'd like and to I put this. <laughs> oh! No, that's perspective. the truth. Bob, I gotta let you have the final final thought, Bob. Okay. You know when the Nazis moved into Austria in nineteen thirty-six. Oh, that is a oh sh! What the fuck? He brings out the fucking Nazis. He's literally, but. But we just watched a clip in which Glenn Beck did the same thing. The same thing. He literally has... Glenn Beck invited a non-religious Jewish person onto his show so that he could say that the war on Christmas is like the Nazis killing Jewish people. And here we see fucking 2005, exactly like I was talking about, the same motherfucking shit. But here Sam pushes back because Sam, unlike Dave Rubin, is 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 uh is not a giant patsy Bob they immediately to raise Christmas Nazis from the schools uh, that is a about it hold, hold, on, on. Let, let Bob, hold on Sam you let Bob make let his point speak, let Bob, let Bob make so, his point go ahead Bob okay Maria Trapp wrote the story of the Trapp singers that's uh in the sound of music and she said she sent her kids to school after the Nazis took over and they came home and said mama we can't say the word Christmas anymore it's now winter holiday I think that ought to a, a disturbed people Kira, that we're moving offensive. toward that kind of attitude in this country. The ah, yes. The Nazis. The Nazis. Famous for targeting Christians? The Christians? Puritans also outlawed Christmas. The founding fathers of this country would fine you in, in Massachusetts if you celebrated Christmas at the beginning. So don't talk about Nazis, Bob. I what? think well, that's yeah, really inappropriate. Why well, do you have to bring to hate Union to this too. Christmas and holiday season? Frost. That's so sad, Bob. Well, it's the so truth. Sad. You ought to read the book yourself. Well, Bob, it's just sad that you have to raise Nazis when you're talking about Christmas and the holiday season. And we all know that Christmas actually, uh, Tannenbaum, it's a German holiday. It, Bob, I, I'm really, really disappointed in, in you. It, it, oh, I'm it, sorry it, to disappoint you, but if you if you can't understand a, a, the, the uh, force of history... To bring I'm, up I'm Nazis, Bob? Nazi. Oh, God. Oh, who are you gentlemen, calling a Nazi? Gentlemen, who are gotta, you calling a Nazi? We gotta sir? let it there. I'm not. We could probably continue. You are, sir. <laughs> Sam Cedar. Who are you calling a Nazi, sir? Who are you calling a Nazi? This is the Demon Mama show. Pisco, sorry, Pisco. I'm so sorry. You have called into the Demon Mama show. It's I'm here. Pisco, come to the website. Join the website. Reserve your username. I'm offended. Air oh, America Radio. Totally offended. It's right there, Bob right up there. Knight, Director of Culture and Family Institute. Gentlemen, obviously, right hey, it's a discussion. Everyone's talking about it, that is for yes. sure. Or a lot of people are talking about it, I should say. Yes. Now I'm just curious. Do I say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, uh, Happy Hanukkah? Which, what, what oh, do you guys like? <laughs> Vivian, I got holocausted last year when my mom got me an iPod instead of AirPods. Oof. Yeah, it's fucking weird. They love to try and make themselves... Wait, there's a demon on this button? You can't press this? Damn, I'm so sorry, Pisco. I'm so sorry. You'll just have to. It's we're. It's part of our process into the war on Christmas. I know it's a. Pisco, I know it's a reference. Obviously, I know. Get on here. Get the fuck in here. Come get your username, and I'll give you the fancy tags so you can have a fancy name. Holy shit. So here's what I want you all to do. We're all in a death struggle with Christmas. Is he the doctor? Yeah, Sam Cedar. Si Sam Cedar is a time lord. Yes, he is. Sam Cedar is a fucking time lord. Look at this. Look at this guy. <sighs> Damn. That is a... You got the original Pisco. Look at that. You don't even have to be 95 anymore. Now, let me give you your name, Pisco. Get ready. Get ready. Yeah. Yeah. Sam is a good looking dude. Not gonna lie. Sam's a good ass looking dude. Bing. Hey, look, Pisco, give it a try. You should have a new name now. Fancy name, fancy name. Hey, Pisco, thank you so much for the sub. Deeply appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Yeah, look at that. You got the fancy name, Pisco. Notable.
Yeah, you're notable. We got a lot of we got had a lot of creators hanging out tonight. Yeah, fancy orange name and the little pentagram icon. You get to, that's how you know. That means Demon Mama knows you as a content creator. Sam always looks good. You know, Sam's still looking good these days. Look at Sam. Look at here. Let's get a let's get the latest video of Sam Cedar. Where's he at? Where's he? When was he on last? Where's Sam? Give me the Sam. Election. Damn, uh, Sam's still looking Tuesday, fucking good, uh, even in COVID, even in lockdown. We'll last looking day. a little tired, but he's still looking good. Look at him. Sam's looking so fucking good. Sam does look good with gray hair. I'm not going to lie. He does. And he doesn't have the stash. Although I will say the stash era, um, mustache era Sam Cedar was, is truly, ep is truly epic. It is truly epic. Yeah, it's because it's because he has he has the energy that makes him look attractive to anybody. You don't have to be pan. You just Yes, it does. A viewer on demonmama.com does count as a viewer. It it is perfectly one to one. It goes right through. It's awesome. It's fantastic. There are a few small issues with the site. Um I guess Twitch is targeting um embeds now, so sometimes people get hit with more ads. But um, we're working on a solution to that, hopefully. That man dry ages like a fine wagyu. Fuck you! God damn it!